G'day folks, here's my um, Farish pannier that I've been uh, talking about in my uh, thread on the forum and uh, as far as I can determine this comes from about the 1970s and when Farish was doing double O gauge it's a die cast metal body and it's very heavy and consequently you don't get the, uh, the sharp detail that you would with plastic however, you know for what I do, I think it's quite okay, and I think I can add some detail to it. Um, of course, the, the main issue with the Loco when I uh, first bought it was that uh, it was, well, actually it wasn't running, but uh, when I did get it running, it was very noisy. And I'll show you why. I, I'll, I'll take the body off and then I'll show you why. Okay, here we have it. Now, this is a, uh, a standard three-pole motor. And uh, who's ever, whoever's owned it before, I think has tried to balance the armature by shaving a bit off the actual metal on the armature here. You can see it's, it's kind of shiny there. Um, it's not because it's been rubbing on anything, but I think somebody's had an attempt at balancing the armature. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. That doesn't really matter. The, the motor works okay. <coughs> uh, the issue that I had with it was actually this uh, plate here at the back of the motor, now if I can bring it close enough you might be able to see see this um, see this brass bearing in here just behind the armature see how it sticks out a bit from the plate well what I didn't realize is that somebody's had this motor apart before and when they've put the plate back in they've reversed it so that the the part protruding is on this side and what that means is that uh, this armature was actually sitting further back against the plate which moved this, oh you can't see it now but uh, there's a worm uh, that connects up with this gear wheel here on the top part and that was moved further back so therefore the gears weren't meshing properly um, but that wasn't obvious to me at first um, because having no knowledge of these locos and just going by what I could see I just couldn't work it out so finally the penny dropped uh, the other day and uh, I reversed the plate and uh, got rid of the noise the uh, the other thing that I did when I first received the loco was uh, added on this um, little wiper here which at the moment is out of place uh, to sit on the wheel and you can see that that connects up with the uh, the wipers on the two wheels at the front and it just just makes it uh, run a bit better having that there and it's not obvious once you've got the body on so what we'll do is um, put the body back on and uh, we'll give it a run right here we go just a bit of power to move it along and I'll bring it back and I'll shut up so that you can actually hear the loco Now that it, that is noisy um, if you compare it to a modern day loco, um, but um, I, I haven't got any record of this um, thing when it was um, playing up. Uh, so you'll have to take my word that this is uh, significantly quieter than what it was before. So I'll just attach the train to it and we'll um, send it on its way, and you can get an idea of what that's like. And now here we go in reverse and uh, which is uh, used to be the only way it would run quietly in the past so there you have it folks that's uh, 
the result of uh, a bit of agonizing and, and thinking and whatever you can see that the uh, as I said the details not fantastic but um, it's got a bit of a bit of charm uh, and it's uh, something from days gone by that's still working I mean these old locos the way they're built you can't kill them with an axe but and they don't look as good as the new stuff but uh, let's face it folks 40 years on it's still working so there's something to be said for the old technology okay cheers gourmet